What is up everyone today? We're gonna to cover nested content versus stacked content for Umbraco. Get your fresh cup of motivation because we're gonna do this right now. Alright everyone, so today we're going to cover nested content versus stacked content from Braco, and they're actually both uh, provided to you by the UMCO uh, group, and I don't know if it's a company or not, but it's definitely Matt Brailsford and Lee Kelleher's collaboration, and uh, we'll uh, make sure we talk about them uh, towards the end as well. And what you're seeing in front of you here is Umbraco 7.79, the current version as I installed this this morning. And I went ahead and primed some of this with some basic uh, things here that uh, let's talk through real quick so you can kind of see what the, uh, the or we're gonna set the stage for you. So we have a home page here, which is totally irrelevant, but we have this page here called Amazing 80s Cartoons. On it, you have uh, a headline, you've got uh, a text, and then you've got a nested content. Uh, module down here where we've got two particular things in there and if we hit the plus button here um, we will have our two types here that we can keep adding so let's take a look in the back office real quick here in the settings um, I organized uh, everything into a folder here we have nested concept type 1 uh, it's just got one tab here and one uh, trivial property on it Nested content type two. What this is here is again, it's another tab, nothing special here. I added a little wrinkle of adding a uh, doc type composition here. Uh, we'll use that later. We've got some other things here that we might look at later, maybe not. And then if we go to the developer tab here, you'll notice that uh, I moved all the, the kind of the, the noisy ones into the default folder here. And we have uh, nested content page builder and uh, if you haven't used nested content, may not make sense to you this tutorial. Might want to learn up on nested content a little bit. But if you have used nested content, you'll be familiar with uh, the configuration here where you can select your doc type and then you have to choose one and only one tab. So in the case of nested content type one, we have only one choice. However, for the nested content type two, we do have two choices. However, nested content only allows um, one item there. Your configuration uh, looks like here where we have minimum max items and nothing um, remarkable here if you've used nested content. And uh, we will cover stack content uh, in just a second here, but before we do that, what I want to do is show some code. And this code here is using a strongly typed models builder, kind of out of the box. The only change I made here was I switched it to DLL mode. And uh, we have a page called Generic Page, and that's what we were looking at in the back office just a second ago. And um, here's where we're doing the strongly typed model, where we're getting the headline. However, for that nested content, I hacked together this little HTML helper that says render nested content partials. It takes that property and a path, and it will then route all of the that I published content through this code right here. I can put it in a gist later and it will render nested content type one, nested content type two based on the alias of it. And so you can see these are also very strongly typed here, thanks to Models Builder, which as a side uh, note is a very awesome thing. So if we were to then come back here and try to render this page here, um, it's simply saying uh, this is the title from the generic page, this is nested content uh, template one, and this is two, and those are again just partials. And so let's contrast that on how would this look with stacked content. So uh, the first thing we'll want to do is create uh, one, and then I'm assuming you've installed stacked content as well. Um, you want to do uh, a page builder, whatever you want to be. It doesn't have to be a page builder. But the first thing you should notice is, is you select the doc type and there is no tab. That's because you'll actually get to use um, every tab that's in the uh, doc type, including inherited or uh, composed one and then the uh the items here look very similar we have a max items i don't think we have a min item we have a single item mode i think this restricts it to only using this first doc type so this is what the data type uh looks like here and if we were to jump back to generic page in fact we didn't actually look at it the first time here's that headline here's the text and then here's what nested content page builder 
uh, is here. I just called it modules. And then here's modules two, which is stacked content uh, page builder. Again, they don't have to be a page builder, but a lot of people seem to be using it in that particular sense. So if we bump back out here to amazing 80s cartoons, I will scroll down a little further here and you can see that we have modules, modules two, this one is nested content implementation. This one is stacked content implementation. A side thing, uh, powering both of these underneath is a third thing called inner content. And that's kind of important because these kind of act the same. There's gotta be a ton of overlapping features and the main differences are gonna be the UI implementation. So to review again, here is a uh, nested content. It's got a horizontal um, UI here with a uh, edit, a sort, and a garbage can here. And then here is item two. It's it's a little uh, still trivial, but got a couple more properties. But it, um, you're going vertical here on your user interface. And again, this one had the two tabs, but we had to commit to which one we wanted to show. We we had content or appearance, and I chose uh, content for this. Now, the same imp implementation with the same doc types in stacked content looks a little bit different. So we have item one, item two. You, If you want to add one between these two, you would select it right there. And then immediately you'll notice that we have a uh, dialogue that opens as opposed to the uh, horizontal kind of accordion style here. So if we put something in here, uh, uh, and hit submit, it will show up there. Uh, item two, uh, that one had, again, more uh, properties. And this one, it's starting to go vertical here. So your vertical space now becomes kind of um, important real estate to manage. But the cool thing is, is now I also have this multiple tab thing here. And so doc type inheritance is totally gonna help me out here where it doesn't nested content. Go ahead and close that. Uh, one cool feature is um, how we can do a preview here. So if I come up here and rename a file here and the preview works um, by having a folder uh, in your partials and we call it stack and then this is the name of the alias of the preview. So if we come back here and refresh it and I'll cross my fingers a little bit. All right, and that's what it looks like there. And uh, I had to duck away real quick because I actually had to touch the web config to make this uh, preview show back up, but no big deal. But the, uh, now a difference we have between stack content and that's the content is the preview here. So we can have a uh, fairly visual uh, preview here. And then this is uh, gonna map over there. And let's go with goodbye. And it instantly updates there, which is a nice key feature here. And if we look at the, the partials over here real quick, we will notice um, that uh, this one is for preview and the Slack. And because of the little helper that I made, uh, the other ones exist in nested content. So if you're just using stacked content, you would probably use something like nested content, uh, or I'm sorry, stack content as your folder name there. So, um, if we look at the preview here, that has a, a particular model, it's called preview model, and you can kind of mess around with it, but just know that there's a special model for the preview. However, I did discover some interesting issues uh, with nested content versus stack content from a uh, models builder standpoint. So if we go to the page there and we say, okay, let's render it with stacked content instead, and I simply change that there, uh, we'll probably be greeted with our favorite um, <laughs> error page there. And it is because that models builder, uh, when it uh, creates the models for uh, stack content, it creates this thing called a detached published content item. Whereas with uh, nested content, you get that nicely typed model. So that was one difference. And uh, I did create an issue with the, uh, the UMCO team there to try to figure that out. Um, if you wanted to and you didn't want to use Models Builder, what you could do is you could do the detached uh, published content here. And if we add it here, uh, we can as well here, but obviously then that breaks kind of how your partials work. And if we kind of restore a couple of these, so let's do get property value. And let's go with first name. And then if we come back here and change this to get property value and go with headline. Of course you would in all reality actually want to change all of those out. Our error should go away and it does. Um, 
and then there's there's your content. So uh, the point is, is uh, Models Builder, it looks like there's a little bit of integration uh, yet to do uh, there. Um, may or may not be high priority for those guys. Another thing uh, that I did notice is that there is a copy and paste uh, discussion going on on GitHub right now. And one thing I did notice about uh, the user interface here is right now we just have the trash can. We can do a sort. There we go. Um, but we don't have a whole lot of uh, other options. Um, those coming from, say, an archetype, whatnot, may be used to like disable, uh, enable. Um, pretty sure that's not going to happen with the nested content. Who knows what the future holds? Uh, might happen on stack content. But either way, make sure you uh, visit the. Uh, umco github and i'll have a link to it here where you can see all their different things here that they do you got umbraco stack content uh nested content uh, there's a bunch of different things there another thing you should also be checking out is their uh, patreon page uh, right now it's kind of a modest amount or not very much in my opinion so we need to try to get the word out and that's what i'm trying to do right now by uh, telling you, hey, if you're actually using any of these things here and it looks like they're missing stack content from the list, go ahead and give them a uh, donation if you can afford it, obviously. And if not, um, try to send them a, a pull request or constructive feedback. So that is nested content versus stack content. Um, it's mostly a user interface uh, thing there with the huge uh, addition that you can have uh, multiple tabs over here on the right. Obviously the orientation and the user experience is a little bit different. And from my uh, discussions with Matt uh, Brailsford, I believe the intention of stack content versus nested content is stack content is more for a layout uh, page builder type thing where nested content, its main intent is to go with just building simple lists. All right, make sure you guys uh, like this video and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.